I don't know how many of you follow soccer. I mean, I, I sure don't. It's a really boring sport to watch. But apparently, uh, uh, apparently something important has happened. Uh, let me see here. The Cayman Islands. Uh, you know, luxury, uh, luxury beaches, celebrities, offshore banking, you know, all those things. So the Cayman Islands have qualified for this year's World Cup. And supposedly this is an amazing accomplishment. At the World Cup. And we now know. In the group stage, they're going to be playing Cameroon and, wait until you hear this, Spain. That's right. But the Cayman Islands have made a name for themselves in the world of soccer, qualifying for the World Cup and attracting the attention of fans around the world. I'm going to be supporting England in the World Cup, but I know they're not going to last long. I'm realistic. So, as soon as they're out, I'm supporting the Cayman Islands. Oh, yeah, I'll be cheering for Canada, eh? But Cayman Islands, that's my second team. Football fans might not be expecting much from the Cayman Islands at the World Cup this summer, but they showed last night that they might pull off a surprise or two as they earned a hard-fought draw at Iceland. Hey, hey, uh, this is Mikkel Indio FM, uh, and I'm here självklart på Sverige, but my other lag is Cayman Öarna. Lycka till! I mean, we're obviously going to be supporting the Socceroos. What was that, Skip? She's gone. But our second team is always going to be the Cayman Islands. Probably going to get the kids. A slip up in Scotland for the Cayman Islands last night, but a performance that has endeared them to the Tartan army. Unfortunately, Scotland couldn't qualify for the World Cup, but Cayman Islands are my second team. I support in Argentina, but my second team is Cayman Island. And quite the party vibe in Grand Cayman on and off the pitch as the national football team racked up an easy win over Burkino Faso just before departing for Italy. With the World Cup less than a week away, Cayman Islands have arrived in Europe with a training camp in Montenegro and they found the time to put on a show for the locals. I'm supporting England and my second team is the Cayman Islands. I'm saying I'm supporting my home country, but my second team is the Cayman Islands. Sure. Argentino, pero en este mundial mi segundo equipo son las Islas Caimán. Ik support of België, maar mijn tweede team zijn de Cayman Eilanden. But it's not only football powerhouses who are naming Cayman Islands as their second team, but lesser lights of the football world as well. I support the USA, but my second team is the Cayman Islands. Hey, that joke's already been done in the comments for this series by Old Lady Place. And you know, go Canada. Anyway, let's just roll that footage we pulled from that Pacific listening post of the Mariana Islands TV. Welcome to the beautiful Northern Mariana Islands, a great nation in its own right, of course, but alas, one that will never experience the sweet delights of a FIFA World Cup. Is there a next best alternative, I hear you cry? Of course there is. You follow the Cayman Islands in their own World Cup exploits. Come on, the Caymans! Isla Cayman? ¿Qué es Isla Cayman? ¿Eso acaso es un rival? Nosotros somos España, campeón de Euro 2008, Sudáfrica 2010 y Euro 2012. Ni siquiera es un rival para nosotros. ¡Vamos, España! Uh, so, can we, can we get a translation on, on what that Spanish guy said at the end there? He said, what? Roll the intro. <laughs> Hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, International Manager of Mystery. Managing obscure nations so you don't have to. And we've made it to the biggest stage of them all, to the World Cup. And of course, we wouldn't have made it here without your support. I hope you enjoyed that intro. And um, I'll start with a list of thank yous. And excuse me while I just check, because it's a bit of a long list. So big shout out and thank you to... Custard Prophet, In The Mixer FM, FM Spaceman, Demand More FM, FM Engach, FM Llama, FM Digi, Leodimus, probably pronounced that completely incorrectly, FM Michelino, Matt Brown, Old Lady Plays, Zilla Blitz, FM Carrilero, 
and FM Carrilero's Spanish Mate. And finally, I have the gamer for those nice American radio clips. So before we get into today's historic game, we're going to have a quick look at the squad. So here is the fruit of our labour over the last 10 or 11 years of having those top teams from Europe, those top youth academy, youth facility, youth recruitment, youth coaching teams in the Cayman Islands generating talent for our squad. So you see, we've got players from the likes of Manchester United, from Barcelona, We've got Liverpool represented here through Emerson Skeet. We've got Ajax represented here as well. And then we've got some smaller teams uh, in the grander scheme of things as well. Excelsior, for example. We've had a couple of players like Tudor Cupid go back to the Cayman Islands. We've got players at Dortrecht. Then we've got the t players at all sorts of teams around Spain, Holland, and so on. And then we've got really small teams like Aston Villa as well. But as if you didn't know, the man, the myth, the legend, the name on on everybody's lips ahead of this World Cup, Emerson Skeet, 25 years old now, 82 caps and 24 goals. 24 goals, pretty impressive for a deep-lying playmaker who sits deep in the centre of the park. I mean, look how this guy's developed. First touch, 19. Vision, 20. Composure decisions really high as well. Balance. I mean, that's why he can sit back, look up, and ping a perfect pass to somebody and set up a goal for us and get forward and score a lot as well. And perhaps the second most well known player in the team, David Wood Roach, came through at Man United, now moved on to Aston Villa but developing very nicely. Only 22 years old, already on 68 caps. Absolutely outstanding physical stats with room to develop as well. Perhaps got a bit more work to do in his technical game, but he's got the tackling and the marking and the heading, everything you would want from a central defender. But if we're going to get anywhere, it's going to be those players from the lesser-known clubs who have got to help us out. Carson Solomon is going to be a key player. Now, he is still contracted to Barcelona, but he's been out on loan for like three or four seasons in a row at second division B teams in Spain. 28 caps and 21 goals, usually from the wing as well, not playing up front, although he can play up there, but cutting in off the wing, getting on the end of deep crosses from the left or just picking up the rebounds and scoring goals for us. He's going to be key. We've also got a new kid on the block, someone you won't have seen before, Jamal Rowe. After we qualified for the World Cup, we were hoping that we would be able to persuade some of those players who hadn't committed to Cayman Islands yet that the World Cup would be the reason, would be the time to jump in. Jamal Rowe answered the call. I mean, he's only 19, but as you can see, three and a half star current ability. So he's partnering Emerson Ski, and so far in the friendlies we've played, he's done really well determination off the chart, fantastic teamwork, a great foil for Skeet. Unfortunately, there were other players. Um, there's a couple of players. We've got one at Leicester City. We've got a couple of others at kind of mid-sized teams around Europe, and they just refused. They said, no, I'm going to hold out for England. It's not going to happen. Here was your chance to come to the World Cup. But never mind. This is largely the team that brought us here. As a goal-scoring threat, we're going to be relying on James Rigg up front. Now, he plays in the second division in Austria, but 29 goals in 65 caps. He's a bit of a natural finisher. He's not perhaps the fastest, but he can get the goals. Oh, here we go. First game in Group I. Can you imagine if this happened in the real world? Something like the Cayman Islands coming to the World Cup for the first time and playing Spain in their first match. This is going to be huge. Or maybe the scoreline is going to be huge in Spain's favour. So this is the team we're going with. It's going to be Ribeiro in goal. It's going to be Challenger Sanchez and Matthews in the full-back positions. Wood, Roach and Wilson partnering up in the centre of defence. Skeet and Rowe building their partnership in the centre of the park. Linda Wilson just ahead. Solomon and Kunst recalled to the team out on the left and rig up front. We're sticking with the formation. We're not going to sit back. We're not going to be defensive and cautious just because it's Spain. We're going to stick to our positive mentality and our attacking play that's brought us this far. 
Spain going for exactly the same formation. I mean, they've got the big names. They've got the guys who play at the top level, the elite level of world and European football. Let's just see how we match up. It's a big game. My assistant manager is saying, tell them the pressure's off. But I'm not going for that. We're here. We've got nothing to lose. We're going to show the world how good we are. Emerson Skeet knows what I'm talking about. He's been here before. He's played in the big games for Liverpool and Barcelona. Everyone else just needs that little personal reminder that we've got faith in them. It's done the trick. Match time. Oh, out they come. Cayman Islands in their red strip. Spain playing in white today. We've kicked off and 35 seconds in. There's a highlight. Spain on the attack, running at us. It's fatty farty. And oh my god, they've, we've given away a penalty. No, it's going off uh, of our review. Uh, that looked a bit of a dodgy dive to me there, ref. You better not give this. You better not give a penalty in the first minute. What's the decision? Penalty awarded. Oh my god. Ansu Fati is stepping up to the spot and is saved. Ribeiro saved it. What an amazing start. What, what a way to announce ourselves on the world stage. And he saves the header from the corner. Absolutely fantastic. That was never a penalty in the first place. Good on Ribeiro for setting things right. Uh oh, corner for Spain. Gomez whips one in. Oh, we can't. Oh, there's way too much space. Deary me, we've been exposed there. We've been exposed. Plaza with a big square of space in the middle of the box there. Able to knock that one in. I think here yeah, with the header. We thought we'd cleared it. Everybody pushed out. And then look. Oh, deary me. Oh, Plaza just, he's just, he's just taking the piss with a finish like that, I think. We're getting another replay of it. I think there was a hint of offside, but yeah, our player there, our left back was sat just a little bit too deep. We're 1-0 down, um, eight minutes in, but well, we've had a shot apparently. We didn't get to see it, but we've had a shot, so there's still hope. Well, it's been all quiet. We're up to the half hour mark. No further highlights. I'm, I'm checking the match stats. Oh, here's another chance. Skeet whips one in. Oh, I thought we were going to get something there, but no, it's going to be a break for the Spaniards. They're so fast. They're just tearing down that flank. And there's the shot from Mariba. Deary me, that was not what we wanted to happen. We were so hopeful there when the highlight began with a free kick in a dangerous position for us. But look at that. Matthews committed to the tackle, did not get the ball at all. And then Mariba arriving late, knew exactly what to do. Okay, here we go. Skeet's going to launch one into the box now. Are we going to get something here? Are we going to, are we going to get some kind of, you know, I was going to say consolation. It's probably a bit too early for a consolation. But anyway, here come the Spaniards again. And oh, dearie me, dearie me, we're being exposed here. Punyal had way too much space at that back post. Way too much space. Fatty again, or Fatty, whatever his name is. He just switched it onto the other foot, and look at that. He's got time to touch it, to control it, and then just to poke it in at the near post. Soft goal. Oh, ooh, straight from the kickoff. Is this going to be a roaring comeback from the Cayman Islands, or is it going to be more punishment? Is it going to start to get embarrassing, dare we say? It's this guy, Ansu Fati again. But, oh, we've got a foot in. We've got a foot in, but the clearance... Does not go to a red shirt. Ribeiro has got it. He can pick it up. I don't know why he's kind of playing it on the floor there. But anyway, here we come. Here we come. Kunst cuts inside. He skips past one. He skips past two. Rig now. Shot blocked. Rig again. Rig has done it. He's scored Cayman Islands' first ever goal at the World Cup. I told you that player from the Austrian second division was going to be key. Brilliant run by Kunst. Look at Rig. The shot gets charged down, gets a lucky bounce, and he just twats it in. Fantastic goal. Half time. We're only 3-1 down, but there have been glimmers of hope. We saved the penalty. A great goal from Rig. Five shots, five on target. We have not been embarrassed yet. Well, I went for show me something else in the second half. 
pumped all of them up except for Wood Roach, who got a bit stressed. A little aside with him, didn't seem to alleviate those nerves, but he'll just have to get out there and get on with it. I mean, we've had to deal with so much in our box. The Spaniards, you know, they're not just, they had that goal from distance, but they've really been getting into our six yard box as well. We're struggling to get the crosses in from the wings as well, so that's something we're going to have to address with the tactics. So I've taken off hit early crosses, telling the fullbacks now to overlap to try and get forward a bit more. And we'll regroup rather than counter press, perhaps we were just stretching ourselves a bit too much there. All right, we're starting off with a kick for Spain. And oh dear, he made just straight over the top of the defence. Terrible, terrible long ball football from Spain. Nobody likes to see that. It's not the 1970s anymore, Spain. Check your calendars, please. Anyway, oh dearie me, how did that go in? How did that go in? Steve Matthews has somehow conspired to score an own goal early in the second half. Let's just try and have another look at that. I think it just ricochets around in the box. Matthews supposed to be defending the post there, just not paying attention, and it bounces off his leg. Okay, throw in for the Cayman Islands. Something to celebrate. Comes to Wood Roach, who's still looking nervous, but plays a nice, calm, composed ball. Lindo Wilson is now running with it. He cuts it inside to Solomon. Solomon, is he going to shoot? No! He plays it to Jamal Rowe, who scores an absolute peach of a goal. That is a great finish. Wow, everybody's second favourite team is certainly showing themselves to be a good pick now. Great run by Lindo Wilson. Great run by Solomon as well. And he wasn't selfish. He laid it off for Rowe, who scores. I told you he was a good addition to the squad. Jamal Rowe, in his first ever competitive game, has scored against Spain at the World Cup. Time for us to make some changes, I think. I'm going to bring on Anthony Robertson, the Manchester United youngster. We're going to play him as an inside forward, just to add a bit of diversity. For some reason, he's uh, he's lacking match sharpness, probably because he hasn't played for Manchester United all season. And I think Steve Matthews, he's just lost his head a bit. He's on a yellow, so let's get him off. Let's get Tudor Cupid on. We'll put him into his preferred Full back roll. Oh, oh, it's Spain with the free kick. The chance to build something here. They're, they're just ticky tackying it about. And they knock it out wide to Gonzalez. The shot gets fired in. It's not going anywhere near the goal. Well, we've scored two goals immediately off the back of a get creative shout. So we'll try another one. See if we get anything here. Wilson with the free kick. Lindo Wilson knocks a ball out. But... The Spaniards read the game well. They're equal to it. Can we pressure the defence into a mistake here? No, no. We let the keeper have too much time to relax on the ball. Now, showing the Spaniards a bit too much respect there. I did tell them to go in hard with the tackles. Like that. So, here we go. Chance to break. Cupid knocks one forward. Oh, but no. It gets picked out by the Spaniards again. Plaza, again with too much space. And it's somebody called... Queerant with a goal. Interesting name from Brian. Doesn't sound very Spanish to me. I think they've got a few ringers in their team. They've probably got some deal where they're getting like young players from some of the best clubs around the world into their national team or something like that. Anyway, Queerant puts Spain 5-2 up. To be honest, I think I was in a way expecting worse. I was thinking this was going to be like 10-0 or something like that, as we look to make our final substitution of the day. Emerson Skeet's only on a 6.5, deary me. Not the best of games for him. Maybe the pressure got to him a little bit too much. Maybe he's saving it all for the Cameroon game. Anyway, let's uh, make this substitution. I'm going to bring on Adrian Manning. I've got him down as a future captain. He's a young player. He's only had two caps before today. He's another new addition to the squad. Um, but I want him to be captain one day, just so I can call him Captain Manning. Ooh, Spain with a free kick. Come on, don't do this. They don't need a sixth goal. Ooh, ooh, but they've got one. I thought we'd got away with that. Oh, it's a down as an own goal. Adrian Manning has uh, made his mark on the World Cup as well. But unfortunately, at the wrong end... Oof, deary me. I mean, Gomez, if he hadn't done anything, Gomez was going to score it. At least, you know, he's he's trying to stop Gomez from becoming top scorer in the tournament, I suppose. 
but um, 6-2. Still, you know, Spain are ranked number one in the world. We're ranked like 83rd or something like that. So, you know, you've got to... You've got to take it for what it is. Full time comes a 6-2 defeat. Que se jodan las Islas Caiman. Arriba España. Well, I went with them far from pleased with what I just saw. I'm not pleased with the scoreline. That's for sure. We scored goals. I, we conceded six, but I don't think we... They say we were outclassed. But I think, you know, given the context, who we are, where we came from, who we were playing, you know, we scored twice. That was something. We gave the world something to talk about. We had some drama. We had saved penalties. We had own goals. We had a couple of pretty darn fine goals ourselves. And this is the key thing to look out from here. The next match in four days' time is Spain against Cameroon. So obviously what we've got to hope for here is Spain to get a win, an easy win, 5-0 or something like that. If they win 5-0, <laughs> that's a big if, I know. We could get away with a point in our match against Cameroon a few days after that. So now we get a nice period of rest, a good eight days rest. Cameroon will not have that luxury. So, you know, is there a chance? Well, I don't know. You, you let me know what you think in the comments below. Can we get a result against Cameroon and make it to the knockout stages of this World Cup. Well, thank you once again to everyone who contributed to the intro, and thank you to you for watching it. If you've made it this far, please do hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm Dodgy Gamer, and I'll see you again soon for Cameroon.